Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Dream Chasers Ground Zero. Today, I have with us Brian Spear. Brian, would you just mind sharing your story with us a little bit and telling us what your personal Ground Zero moment was like for you? And then to piggyback off of that question, just sort of talk about some of the small things that you learned along the way to help you to get to where you are today. Well, I would say that, first of all, thanks for uh, 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 the invitation to get on here, Aaron. It's very much appreciated. Looking forward to, to chalk and shop here, but just diving right in. Um, I knew from a very young age that I, I wanted to put my family on a better uh, financial foundation. So I didn't really grow up with a, uh, a silver spoon in my mouth, if you will. Um, our firm today, we actually own and operate mobile home parks across the eastern half of the country. We own stuff in a lot of states from New York to Florida, to Michigan, to Oklahoma, a lot of places in between. But my very first experience with mobile home parks was actually living in one when I was 10 years old. So um, I knew from a very early age, I just wanted to try to get my family out of that precarious situation. Uh, my parents got divorced when I was 10. Uh, I'll, I'll spare you the sob story. But my entire journey from when I was that age um, was to try to put my family in a better financial position. Um, I knew at that young age, I, I didn't, uh, uh, I needed to get more money, right? I needed to get more money for my family. At that point, uh, the, the, the wheels start turning, you start thinking, how, uh, how can I get more money? Um, at that time, um, I didn't have any, I need a good job. Uh, how do you get a good job? I need a good degree. How do I get a good degree? I don't have any money to go buy a college degree. I better go I better go get some scholarships. So I worked really hard academically and athletically to try to get as many scholarships as I could. Long story short, ultimately landed at the University of Kentucky uh, with some academic and athletic scholarship offers. Um, uh, ended up playing baseball. I wasn't tall enough to play basketball, wasn't strong enough to play football. But um, in baseball, you could be any size and shape. So I taught myself how to hit both right-handed and left-handed so I can get more notoriety for, from college scouts. And uh, anyway, Pursuit of business degree at the University of Kentucky was was fortunate to um, have multiple job opportunities shortly thereafter. Um, but yet another one of those foundational moments, and I would say one of those pivotal ground zero moments in my life was when I was in Memorial Hall at University of Kentucky, beautiful, beautiful, old, old building. And uh, there's a couple hundred students in there in, a, in, in an accounting lecture, and they're informing us about the power of compound interest. Everybody's stumbling in at 7.30 in the morning for an eight o'clock class. And I look around, there's 190 kids that are in their sleeping pants still. You know, they're all wearing hoodies and, and like still passed out. Like, I mean, and, and, and I'm looking around while this individual is, is conveying to me the power of compound interest. And I'm wondering, are, do you, are you guys hearing what this guy is, is saying right now? I mean, truly, I knew at that moment, I'm 20 years old. I, I didn't have two nickels to rub together, but I knew at that moment that I was definitely going to be a millionaire. It was just going to take time. And from that point, truly, it was doing everything that I could to save as much money as possible, building piles of cash in an effort to turn them into streams of income in the investment world. At that time, I didn't know exactly what that meant, but I knew that I needed to garner as much capital as I could to invest as much money as I could in an early age to provide my family with that firm financial foundation that I'd been so yearning for all those years ago. Um, and that's kind of what, what, what set me up on my, my professional journey shortly thereafter. I'll keep it rolling here. And in my 20s, uh, I was very fortunate. I had multiple different job opportunities, was one step beneath academic All-American at University of Kentucky. So um, had a couple of opportunities shortly thereafter uh, and just basically chose the job that was going to earn me the most money. It wasn't the preferred uh, position, I wouldn't say, but I was willing to put in the work so that I could earn a, a healthy six-figure living uh, to, to generate those piles of capital, all the while knowing that I wanted to get involved um, in the investment world and go full-time uh, full real estate um, so that I could get a little bit more of that, that uh, lifestyle freedom. Um, along the way, while I'm doing that, I'm, I'm searching for a mentor, somebody that I can leverage their respective skill set, and I can bring my skill set along the way uh, in an effort to, to create a, you know, a mutually beneficial relationship. One plus one equals 11, if you will. Um, you know, I know you're rocking the podcast and it's, it's phenomenal. It's an amazing, amazing medium and a phenomenal platform. And I was a very early adopter of podcasting as well. Um, I'm sure that there's a lot of folks out here listening and looking up to you and what you're doing today. Uh, I was similar years and years prior. Um, 2013, I remember listening to a podcast by Kevin Buck. And Kevin, uh, uh, fortunes to say he's my business partner today. But at the time, um, he was just in my ears from a distance, didn't know me from Adam. And uh, I went ahead and uh, reached out to him cold and said, hey, buddy, I, I tell you what, man, I love your story. And I've got an offer you can't refuse. I'm going to come down to Florida full time. 
I'm going to bring hundreds of thousands of dollars and I'm going to try to help you grow your business. I want to work 60, 70, 80 hours a week. I don't want you to pay me a dime. And I think over time, we can leverage your business model. He had had 15 years of experience in real estate, had done some phenomenal things off market direct to owner. And I knew that I could take my skill set of scaling companies. During my 20s, I was fortunate to, to scale a business um, from, from scratch up to a pretty healthy valuation. It's subsequently gone full cycle. And I knew that I could help him scale his business model to try to help significantly more people over time. So that was kind of how I was able to branch off and go real estate full time. Um, uh, and I'll just push pause there, but I've been rambling here, Aaron. So dive in headstrong, man. Ask any clarifying questions that you might have. Yeah, no problem at all, man. I mean, I love the story so far. I mean, definitely relating a lot to it personally. I know that mm -hmm. like you're talking about sitting in class and looking around and asking like, are you guys getting this? Are you understanding <laughs> what he's taught? Like, dude, I relate to that on such a level that I can't even explain. <laughs> like, um, just to where I, I really look around at a lot of my peers and I'm like, what, like, aren't you guys understanding? Like this stuff is huge. And there's a lot of stuff that people my age could be doing and they just don't pay any attention. And that's and a lot of where starting this came from because I'm like, more people need to know about this and it needs to come from somebody in their shoes rather than just, I mean, like, while there's tons of guys out there, I mean, with really, really, really informational podcasts and stuff that will tell you everything you need to know, it's just not really coming from a place that they're interested in there and they're not, it doesn't exactly light that fire in them. So um, like I was saying, I'm just kind of, um, I really relate to your story there and I understand a lot of exactly where you were coming from and um, really um, the wanting to get your family out of that situation. That's like exactly what I'm in right now. So the you know, whole story mm -hmm. hit home is really all I'm trying to say. Just I 100% understand where you're coming from. But uh, yeah. yeah, for me, I guess, um, I'm sorry, you, did you want to add something there? Well, I was just going to say, I mean, um, first and foremost, I'd say two points. One is that oftentimes uh, the, the, the old adage goes that you need to say something seven times before somebody can hear it for the first time. So irrespective of all your respective peers, and you know, you might catch it and it might resonate with you a little bit earlier. Uh, but oftentimes it just, the, the message just needs to continue to get drilled home, home over and over and over. And then eventually, I think that most folks do eventually uh, uh, realize the, the significance and the, uh, 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 the veracity of the statements that you've been sharing along the way. And then, then secondarily, oftentimes it's just, you have to have an individual or an authority figure that shares the message that will ultimately resonate. Um, that's why podcasting is such an amazing medium. Um, back in the day, right, uh, people would look up to TV stars and um, sports, uh, sports stars, athletes, and things of this nature. And while that certainly is still true today, um, those individuals were the only folks that had really broad mass media, multimedia attention. Uh, I mean, it was extremely expensive to get television spots, et cetera. So that one individual that was up on TV, everybody basically had to listen to that individual because there were only a couple of mediums available. Today with the advent of podcasting, you can have a very small tribe, you know, exceedingly small tribe, just a couple of few thousand folks, but your specific message will resonate significantly more deeply with those individuals, as long as you can find folks that have common paths, common history, common background, and you can help out uh, uh, those folks, I would say even more so than what some of those folks on TV could, um, it's very difficult to relate to those individuals. They'll never really walk in our shoes. They won't have the same exact sort of experiences that we will. Uh, but I mean, I've, I've, I've been fortunate to see the, you know, how podcasting has evolved over the past seven, eight years. And uh, the, 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 the amazing differences that it's made in the lives of many. So um, anyway, just feel like the message ultimately has to come from somebody that has had a similar path historically to have that message truly resonate. But uh, in, in any event, uh, Aaron, I love every bit of that, buddy. Yeah, I think that's one of the things I truly love about um, how Adam and I kind of crafted this whole message together is that really kind of no matter where you come from, no matter what you're doing, everybody has that quote unquote kind of ground zero. Like everybody had to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. So That's one of the things that I really love about the message that we're trying to share is just that like no matter what, who's listening, what they want to get into, everybody can pretty much relate to what that felt like. And then they can all kind of find community in that space and, you know, help each other grow from there and, you know, learn alongside of each other. But that's, like I said, that's just one of the things that I really love about what we've been doing here. But as far as your story goes, um, I know you mentioned that you were able to, um, you, you mentioned that you were able to grow and scale a business in your 20s. 
and that, that's partially what I'm trying to do right now. So I'm actually genuinely curious about this one is that um, just, I just kind of wanted to ask a little bit more about that, just sort of how you mm -hmm. went about that. Um, I know one of the things that I'm struggling with right now is sort of like a, like a work-life balance thing. Like for me, I, I really want to make sacrifices now to put myself ahead, considering like what nobody else is doing right now. But I also know I'm young, I'm 20 years old. Like I don't want to necessarily, I don't want to say waste this time, but I don't necessarily want to completely miss out on my younger years too, spending all of my time trying to necessarily focus on growing and, you know, scaling a business. So um, I guess we'll just start there. I just partially want to ask sort of how you were able to kind of work your way through that time, you know, uh, balancing those things in your life. Fair. And um, I would, I'd convey a couple of things. One, back to the lifestyle uh, business. Ultimately, when you do make the decision to go full, full time and you're seeking to build your resume and your entrepreneurial venture, whatever that might be, um, you have to make a decision from the outset, in my opinion, what kind of business you're seeking to create. Um, you can create a business that is a lifestyle business um, that provides you a certain level of, of security and size and scale, um, or you can choose to create a performance business, um, which is a, a, different, uh, a different venture altogether. So a lifestyle business would be much more akin to folks that are out and, and trying to create a, a, a real estate company for them and their families. Um, and they might have somewhere up to rough shot 50 employees, something like that. Uh, but the, the likes of Uber uh, and the folks that are exceedingly phenomenal disruptors out in Silicon Valley, they're oftentimes much more performance businesses that are move fast and break things. And they're trying to get to significant scale very quickly. Um, Uber, Tesla, Facebook, Google, you can keep going. All of those respective businesses oftentimes are are in the red in the first handful of years of growth of their business. And in order to really get to scale quickly, you have to sacrifice a hell of a lot along the way. Um, to beat your competitors in that sort of structure, I mean, you're sacrificing a hell of a lot along the way in order to, to do that. Um, Kevin and I have decided that ultimately we're gonna create a lifestyle business. Um, we've never missed any family events and we'll never do so. I would never ask him to forego doing anything that he would want to do with him and his family. If any time uh, I or he would like to go take a little bit of time for our families and our wives and, 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 and et cetera to, to enjoy life, the fruits of our labor, we'll certainly do so. Uh, but I think that that needs to be established in advance, especially if you have partners. Um, otherwise there could be some underlying fester, festering uh, frustration that occurs. Um, over time. So I think today I had the luxury of saying that. I would say that in my 20s, I was the guy that was grinding every day, doing whatever it took uh, to make it happen, right? So I don't know when the flip uh, switched for me, uh, but certainly in the 20s, I was, I was out there doing anything that it took in order to build the resume and the foundation to afford me the opportunity to have a little bit more freedom later. And I was willing to sacrifice to do so. It's, it's, it's I think over time, what I've realized and experienced has shown me is that that time never ends. If you're willing to sacrifice in your 20s, it's likely in your personality and your DNA that you'd be willing to sacrifice in your 30s, you'd be willing to sacrifice in your 40s and 50s and beyond. Um, I think that over time, the more that I've, I've been in business, um, you just have to make the decision in advance that you're going to carve out time for friends and family, irrespective of how your individual entrepreneurial venture is going, or else time will just fly right by you. So. Um, I think that over time I've learned that you have to make the decision in advance. Our calendars are, are slammed, uh, rightfully so. But if you put the, the vacation or the time with your family on the calendar, you know, three, four, five, ten 10 months in advance, when that day arises, you're already prepared. You kind of already worked through, through that in advance. So uh, that's one thing regarding the uh, performance businesses versus the lifestyle business. Um, and then reverting back to just my, my little story here, um, right after college, as mentioned, I had an opportunity to choose a few different gigs, uh, but chose the job that was ultimately going to provide me with the, the, the most uh, uh, salary in the very near term. And it was commission based as well. So uh, upside potential. Um, and I was uh, traveling around the country doing some SOX telecommunications audits for large telco companies, uh, AT&T, Verizon, things of that nature. And um, a couple of years into that, um, there were three founders in that company. And I graduated shortly after, right, right around the Great Recession. And, and during that venture, it became kind of a tough, uh, tough time, obviously. Um, and those three founders had a, a partnership dissolution. Um, they started having a disagreement because ultimately it became a little bit more difficult time in the business. And two of them basically said, hey, we wanna fire some folks and ultimately retain our salaries at the top tier level. 
And one of the individuals said, look, I'd prefer to take a hit, um, not take any salary for as long as it takes to ensure that we kept the employees uh, on the dole and, and, and uh, um, comfortable. Um, so it created a rift in the partnership. And one of the individuals branched off and started his own venture. Um, he ended up being my mentor because when he branched off and started his own venture, he asked a handful of people to come along with him. I was one of six that ended up coming along with him uh, and started a business from scratch um, that subsequently over time uh, grew into a, a thriving organization that had over 50 employees, ultimately went full cycle, sold for eight figures and did exceptionally well. But that experience basically going, you know, taking the leap of faith and, and, and starting at the ground floor, if you will, ground zero of, of a new venture, um, learning what it took to start a business from scratch with just a handful of folks. Um, you know, when you go to Walmart, pull one of those, you know, card tables out. I remember bringing it back into the office and you got folding chairs and a little card table and we're all huddled around trying to figure out how to make this deal happen. Um, all the way to scaling it up into something that was ultimately going, going to go full cycle uh, and sell, sell for eight figures. That afforded me a, a phenomenal opportunity. There, were, there was risk associated in doing so, but I knew that I would learn an absolute boatload along the way. And knowing full well that I wanted to go full-time in, in real estate and be an entrepreneur of my own, um, that was um, an experience I'd never uh, uh, be able to, 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 to do again and certainly wouldn't take for granted. So even if that flopped, uh, I knew that I would learn a ton along the way. Um, fortunately, it, it did very well and afforded me the opportunity to have certain liquidity to, to go full-time into real estate shortly thereafter. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's the, that's the story on, on that respective venture. No, I love it. You know, um, and one of the things you just mentioned there was um, that um, you didn't necessarily know how it was going to go, but you were just kind of willing to open yourself up to that opportunity and see what happened. You knew you were going to learn a lot and you knew there was, you know, massive positives, but there could also be negatives. You didn't know where that was going. And I know that for a lot of people, when they don't know, there's a lot of fear associated with that. So one of the things I always like to ask um, the guests on here is always just kind of how did you kind of handle that fear? And, I, and I'm sure there was some existing for you at that time as well, just that uncertainty, not really knowing what was going to happen, but being willing to put your cards on the table and just kind of let fate, if you will, just kind of take you in its hands and see what was going to happen next. I agree. Um, and it's, it's, it's not an easy uh, decision to make. Um, I just know that that fear that you feel, um, I have found historically along the way in many, many different experiences that I've had, when I have that level of uncertainty and that fear, if you will, um, it provides you with an opportunity. And oftentimes it means that I need to push the cash and push forward through that endeavor. I remember when I was a very, very young, young, uh, young, young adolescent, and I read a, uh, a quote that has stuck with me. Courage, courage is not the absence of fear. It is being afraid and being willing to, to push forward anyway, in spite of fear. And, and that always um, helped me um, in those moments where I felt that there was some risk or, or there was some uncertainty. It certainly helped me in, in sports, um, in, in, you know, bottom of the ninth, you know, bases loaded down to three, two count, two outs, no fear. You know what I mean? Uh, just that, uh, knowing that that's the time to push forward, um, I think is built in your DNA over time. And again, it has been my experience that when I, when I do push forward in that, those, those, um, situations, it has always turned out for the better. Um, when I was in college, I spent two years at Wichita State, actually, and then ultimately chose to walk away from a full scholarship and uh, head over to the University of Kentucky, where I only had a bit of academic money and had to re-earn my scholarship at the University of Kentucky uh, two years later. Um, from a kid that had no money, uh, it was difficult to walk away from a full, full scholarship where I was actually getting paid to play. Um, uh, with the amount of scholarships that I had. And I was walking away from that, knowing that if I really wanted to be a little bit more successful in baseball, I had to take a leap of faith, walk away from all that, take a lot of risks, put, put a lot of chips on the table, but ultimately it ended up being phenomenal. Um, again, helped me become one step beneath academic All-American, captain of the team, not because I was the best. We had six big leaguers on the team. I just worked really hard. And same thing when I uh, started branching out in, 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 in that venture, um, and asked to, to, to begin uh, working uh, with them, um, um, starting a, a business from scratch, um, taking a leap of faith. I knew that, uh, again, there's risk associated with that, but I'd learned a hell of a lot along the way. And 
I never wanted to have that in the back of my mind. What if, what if I didn't try it? And the same thing, and most importantly, when I decided to take the full leap of faith and go full-time in real estate, um, you never want to have those regrets in life. I know that if I go up there and I, I fail miserably in this entrepreneurial venture, I know that at least I walked up to the plate and took a swing and, and, and gave it my best and I could walk away with my head held high. But you know, decades down the road, years and years hence, if I didn't take that leap of faith, I would always wonder what if. And, it, and I was in a job nine to five, 30, 40 years and something that I didn't really love doing. I don't know if I could look myself in the mirror knowing that I didn't live my life to the fullest and give my shot, take my shot. Even if I swing and miss, at least I'm gonna give my shot and, and try to create the life that, that, uh, uh, that I'm yearning for, for, for myself, my family, friends and family, all, all those things. So um, I think those moments when you're pressed with that fear, um, it's a moment to push, push the, the gas pedal. That's been my experience every step of the way. I've never regretted that. Even if I failed, from my perspective, it's irrelevant. Um, again, reverting back to baseball here, I grew up playing that my whole life. Failure, um, what is failure? It's, it's trying to redefine what that definition is. Uh, folks that, that, that are baseball players that are hitters go up to the plate and they, they fail 70% of the time. They hit 300. They go to the Hall of Fame, some of the best players in the history of baseball, and they fail 70% of the time. Um, it's okay to fail as long as you fail forward every time that you, you hit a brick wall. You just keep pushing forward. Fail forward one foot in front of the other, and eventually, inevitably, ultimately, you'll be successful. Absolutely. I love it, man. Um, I know I relate a lot to um, what you were saying there just uh, before was about um, how that often when you hit that fear, that, that brick wall of fear or whatever that looks like, that usually what you want is right on the other side of that. And that's one of the things mm -hmm. that I try to tell people all the time, because I mean, it's it happened for me numerous times in my life. I know you related to sports. I played sports as well. So I definitely understand it there. But usually anybody can kind of look back on a moment that they were scared or nervous or whatever those feelings were that were kind of holding them back at that time. It's usually because they were faced with something that they really wanted to do. And whether they did it or not, that was up to them. I don't know where that fits in your story personally, but um, when I say your story, I mean their story, but I just wanted to clarify that. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of people that I know that have had numerous moments like that. And I, I try to preach that, that, that being one of those points that I hope is starting to drive home a little bit. Cause I know we've mentioned it numerous times, but yeah, failure is usually a sure shot, a sure sign that there's something you want to do right on the other side of that. If there's something that you want, there's some sort of goal or something that you identify with that you're shooting for, that you want, that you have some sort of drive towards. And that's all part of like, you see these big people now that you think are fearless and, you know, that do all these things and make all this impact in the world and stuff, but they didn't start there. It all started with them overcoming that fear one time and they had to just take that step and then do it again. That's where courage comes from. Courage comes from failure and choosing to do it again. Like you said, uh, professional hall of fame uh, baseball players fail 70% of the time. Like, but they reach that point because they continue to go to the plate regardless of the fact that they know the chances are slim. I would also reiterate uh, and try to try to point out that um, so long as you are prepared, right? As long as you work hard and you do everything in your power to be as successful as you can be, then you can walk away with your head held high. Um, if you have, you know, chosen a different path and, and you're not putting your, your, your effort forward and, and you know you're, you're, you're moving forward in, in a haphazard manner, you'll still have a little bit of that lingering feeling of uncertainty and did you really give it your all along the way? I know that when I fail, I hope that I continue to fail, right? It's inevitable, it's going to occur, but I know that if I'm doing everything that I can every day to, to be as successful as I can, make all the prudent decisions along the way, that, that those failures won't frustrate me because I'm doing everything in my power to, 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 uh, to be as successful as I can and um, uh, to overcome those respective obstacles. Um, I'll, I'll use this, this phrase again, uh, preportunity. I don't know if you've ever heard that one, but when I was in high school, um, I saw Ron Polk speak, phenomenal Hall of Fame baseball coach, um, exceptional guy. And he, he, in my mind, coined the term preportunity, um, which just means that you need to prepare in advance for that opportunity when it arises. Um, 
I'm one of these guys that believes that there's no such thing as luck. Um, I'm reminded of the old story of the guy that gets up every single day, grinds for 30 years. He's got dirt under his fingernails and he's chipping away and he seems to be not making any headway for 10, 20, 30 years. And then 30 years down the road, he finally strikes it big in whatever venture it might be. Um, and then all of his friends and, and, and peers uh, call him an overnight success. Well, he'd been working at that for, for 30 years. Granted, there's, there's some semblance of uh, um, uh, circumstances that need to hit, um, but he'd been preparing for that one opportunity for 30 years. So when the moment arise, uh, arises, he's, he's ready and, and has the ability to take advantage of that respective opportunity. Um, you just need to stay ready um, so that you can take advantage of that uh, inevitable opportunity when it does come, uh, come, come knock on your door. Uh, and, then, and then have the courage and a leap of faith to, to take advantage of that opportunity when it does knock. Um, so in any event, I'll push pause there, Aaron. Yeah, I mean, this just kind of makes me wonder a little bit. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there, myself being one of them at first, that I was still, like I knew that I found something that I wanted to pursue and I found an opportunity that I felt like, you know, I wanted to pursue, but I was still slightly hesitant because um, I didn't want to start pursuing that not being able to put my all into it, like you said, uh, being able to prepare for that opportunity and being um, being able to put your all into it, knowing that you put your best work into it. I didn't want to go down that road not being able to put my all into it because then I wouldn't have felt fulfilled in myself or, and then also along with that, increasing my chance of failure, not being able to put everything into it. So like for me, I partially just wanted to know, um, how you were able to, like, I know you mentioned going through, you know, numerous things mentally here, but um, how you were able to stay focused and motivated on that end goal while you were going through these ups and downs and changes, while, how you were able to keep that end goal in mind, knowing that this is where you wanted to go, knowing that this is what I'm going to put my time into, and regardless of everything else going on, this is where I want to be, and this is where I want to go, and just kind of, sort of how did, how did you able to, how were, how were you able to stay focused on that? This is great. And I think it's about your big why, whatever that might be for you. Um, if you have a big enough why, whatever the issues, the ob objections, the, the problems that arise, they are all just little, little anthills. I mean, you think about these problems being mountains, but if you've got a big enough why, those are all issues that can be resolved. It might take a minute, it might take a day, it might take a year, but you can overcome those if your why is big enough and have enough kind of embers and fire running inside of you to, to go ahead and, and push through those respective obstacles, whatever they might be. Um, it, it, for me personally, it just comes back to how I was raised, where I grew up. Um, I was a kid that, that, you know, when my parents got divorced, my, my father moved to Gary, Indiana in the 1990s. It was known as the murder capital of the world, had more murders per capita than any city throughout the country. My mom moved to the south side of Chicago and moved into a trailer park. Um, I was never going to allow my family to live like that when I was an adult. So regardless of whatever hurdles, struggles, obstacles we're going through, um, I always will have that in the back of my mind to drive me and push me forward, um, irrespective of whatever challenges just come through because I'm unwilling to go back to that scenario. Um, and that's my big why, just providing for my family and, and being able to change my family tree in one, one generation. And real estate really does provide you the opportunity to do so. Entrepreneurship in general often does. Um, so that's, if you have a big enough why, um, all of that, uh, I think will, 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 that big why will, will push you forward to when you have those, uh, those issues. 100%. I love that. I really love that a lot. Um, I do think it is about time for us to start kind of winding it down just a little bit here. I want to be, uh, conscious of your time. Don't want to take up too much of it today. You've been a rock star for us so far. So, um, just kind of in wrapping things up a little bit, I just want to ask, um, well, the question I, I love to ask everybody is if you could go back and have a conversation with your like 18 to 24 year old self or not even necessarily in those specific years, but with your ground zero self, mm -hmm. what do you think you would tell yourself in that conversation? That's a good one. And I would probably point back to the lifestyle business versus the performance business. I was willing to burn both ends of the candle. Um, you know, I passed on a couple of, uh, of, of, of weddings that, uh, I could have attended in my 20s of, of, of uh, friends and things of this nature because I was grinding so hard, willing to do whatever it took to be successful. And while that's great and um, you have to have some of that drive, no doubt, I think that if I were to revert back and look back you know, years and years prior, I would take more time. 
uh, for myself to enjoy those uh, those years. Um, and I think that now I've come to the realization that you make the decision in advance whether or not it's going to be a lifestyle business or a performance business. And choose that lifestyle business from my perspective is is, is of the utmost importance. Um, and all the rest of the chips will, will, will fall in line along the way. Uh, but you have to carve out that time for friends and family. Um, and I don't think that I did enough of that in my 20s. So that would be the only, the only thing that I think that I would give myself. And then I'd also say that it takes longer than you anticipate. Um, of course, you want to get the boat as close to the dock as possible when you're when you're trying to jump ship. Meaning, if you get a nine to five job and you're trying to go full time into entrepreneurship, whatever that might be, um, the goal is to try to get that boat as close to the dock as possible before taking that leap of faith and going full time. Um, but when you go full time, it's not going to happen overnight. It's still going to take time. It still is going to take. It might take multiple years to get you to the point where um, you can meet and see the 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 income and the standard lifestyle that you had. Uh, along the way. So it's, it's, there will be that, uh, uh, that gap, um, uh, that wilderness gap where you're pushing and you're uncertain about the future. Uh, but assuming you can cross that wilderness and get to the other side, and it truly is a, a phenomenal uh, lifestyle that provides you, provides you with the freedom to do the, what you, what you would like and live the life that you'd like with, with your family. Um, and certainly worth every, every, every bit of it, uh, all the effort, energy, time that you put into it, certainly worth it. Um, just know that one, carve out time for family. And two, it's going to take you a little longer than you anticipated, but you'll inevitably get there. So that's what I'd say. No, I love that a lot. And personally, I feel like those are two things that I honestly needed to hear right now. So I think there's somebody else that will definitely benefit from those two points as well. But um, from there, I really just want to say thank you so much, Brian. I really enjoyed our conversations today. I really uh, appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come in and share your story with us and lots and lots of valuable nuggets in this one today. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll repeat it again. Brian Spear, was your rock star of the day. Uh, can't thank you enough for coming on and just being willing to spend some time with us. Um, I'll go ahead and open it up. If you, if you have any other closing remarks, you know, feel free to throw those out. But other than that, I suppose I'll go ahead and, uh, you know, let you get back to the rest of your day. Yeah, back to the grind, buddy. No, very much appreciated, Aaron. Uh, <laughs> certainly uh, enjoyed our conversation here. Always nice to jump on a talk shop, bud. Awesome. Yeah. Once again, man, I can't thank you enough. I really appreciate it. And I know that everybody definitely got some valuable nuggets out of this one today, but with that, everyone always remember this is dream chasers ground zero and there's nowhere to go from here, but up. Uh